innovation and experimentation of cutting edge ideas is at the forefront of any and all advancement. Without entrepreneurial innovators, we wouldn't have things like the iPhone, we wouldn't have things like the internet, and we wouldn't have things like Ironius, the coffee mug slash clothes iron. But as we know, innovation is not always easy, and other times it's downright fatal. Today, we're gonna to be talking about five innovators and inventions in the automobile industry that ended up leading to their inventor's demise. I say to kick it off, let's first talk about William Nelson. William Nelson was born in 1879 and worked as a General Electric employee in Schenectady. Known as an innovator, he was looking for a way to take bicycles and make them motorized, kind of like a motorcycle or a bicycle. He took a mechanized attachment and stuck it on a standard bicycle. And I have to say it looked and functioned a heck of a lot like a motorcycle, although a lot less powerful. Unfortunately, this great mind passed away in 1903 when William Nelson fell off his invention while riding on a hill, leading to his quote, being killed instantly. A man ahead of his time, a man with a fantastic mustache, a man that we don't know whether or not he went by Willie Nelson, I want to lead my respect towards this inventor. Rest in peace. But let's jump to the wonderfully bearded Francis Stanley. This innovator was born in 1849 in Maine. Stanley, along with his twin brother, Freeland Stanley, so Francis and Freeland, invented first a brush used to colorize photographs, and then later a machine used to automatically create photography plates. Plates were what photography was printed on back in those days. This device making the brothers over $1 million in annual sales. That's about $31 million today. These people were no slouches. Then casually it seems, after developing an interest in automobiles, the Stanley brothers sold their photography plate business to Eastman Kodak for what would be $15.5 million today, or about 446 Bitcoin. They then built the Stanley Steamer, a vehicle that some of you guys might have heard of and something you should never look up on Urban Dictionary. It was a steam-powered automobile back in 1897. They would produce and sell over 200 cars over the next two years. Tragically, Freeland Stanley would pass away in 1918 due to Freeland driving his invention into a wood pile in order to avoid traffic caused by wagons. Rest in peace, brother. Third, Sylvester Howard Roper is an incredibly capable inventor that would fall to an invention of his own hands. Born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1823, Roper invented a steam buggy in 1863, a motorized bicycle in 1867, although he called it the Velocipede, which sounds like a Velociraptor centipede or something like that. This is often cited as the first motorcycle in history. He also invented a shotgun choke, a device used to narrow the spread of shotgun pellets when fired, made a revolver repeating shotgun, fire escapes, padlocks, and a different type of machine gun than what was available at the time. He also built engines with one to four horsepower, sewing machines, a quote unquote hot air machine, and he and his son created factory equipment to generate screws. But unfortunately in 1896, Roper was riding one of his later Velocipede models. He actually was pushing out 40 miles per hour, defeating the most professional cyclist in the area of the time. Then fell over off of his vehicle onto the track, hitting his head and crashing. He would pass away due to this accident, and it's not sure if it's because of a heart attack he suffered about the same time or due to the force of the crash. Clearly a massive genius and nothing but respect to Mr. Roper. All right, four of five. Our next one is Fred Dusenberg. He was born in 1876 in Germany, actually, although would spend most of his career and life in the United States. He would be known worldwide as a race car designer and race car engine designer. He apparently created the overhead camshaft, the idea of having four valves per engine cylinder. He apparently invented the eight cylinder engine, which was an inline eight, amazingly, four wheel hydraulic brakes, an early version of the automatic transmission, a new cooling system, and more, all within the early 1900s. So pretty much if any of you guys are car enthusiasts, you have a ton to thank this guy for, as multiple valves for cylinders and dual overhead camshafts are extremely popular in both 
economy vehicles and high performing vehicles as well. He then started an automobile company that would start pumping out vehicles in 1921 and would continue to do so until 1937. Fred himself would also race in his own inventions. However, in July of 1932, Fred was driving an extremely high powered prototype vehicle of his own creation. He was on an Indiana highway and hit a wet patch on the road, leading to his vehicle overturning and him being thrown from it. You might think that's the end of Fred, but his prognosis was actually good as a result of this accident. He only kind of tweaked his back and dislocated his shoulder, which are not life-threatening injuries. Unfortunately, what was a life-threatening injury at the time was he developed a pleural pneumonia, which eventually would lead to his life being taken, and it was thought that his accident is what prompted it. Another genius. Rest in peace, King. You're fantastic, and I want to thank you for all you've contributed to the automobile industry. Last one for the purpose of this video and the most modern example, Henry Smolinski and Harold Blake. The idea of a flying car is a concept that we haven't even come close to cracking today. Although it pains me that my Toyota Highlander is not yet skyworthy, I have come to terms with the fact that it's probably never leaving the ground. But imagine an attempt 50 years ago that actually functioned to a certain extent. That brings us the AVE Miser. Henry Smolinski and his development partner, Harold Blake, altered a Cessna Skymaster, which is a very small airplane, and attached their altered portion of the Skymaster onto a Ford Pinto, which they chose due to an extremely low curb weight. In 1973, they had two prototypes made. On a test flight in 1973, the Miser actually took flight and was flying okay, but had to be landed shortly afterward due to the mounting of the right wing becoming partially dislodged. The test driver not wanting to test the vehicle any further and pull the right wing completely off, decided not to turn the vehicle and made an emergency landing into a bean field. It is not known whether or not these beans were Pinto beans. But he landed successfully and simply drove the Pinto back to the airport. A month later, Smolinski and Blake were looking to do another test drive of this flying car. But that same professional test driver was unavailable. So they decided to do it themselves. Although initially successful with the Miser taking flight, the same attachment for the right wing would fail. But Blake, who was driving at the time, decided to turn the vehicle further testing the right wing's integrity. This resulted in the right wing folding inward and both men being killed in a fiery crash. That's a quote, fiery crash. I wanna say rest in peace, gentlemen. We will complete your dream of having a successful and economy flying car one day. We will. Every sci-fi movie has told me that. So innovation isn't easy and is also dangerous. Although I presented a lot of these entries in kind of a ridiculous or comical light, it's clear that these people were extremely attached to their work and believed in their inventions. So let us pay our respects to these inventors, the danger they put themselves in, and for their contributions to the automobile industry of today. Rest in peace, Kings. And as for you watchers, I wanna thank you so much for watching. My name is Mitchell. I'm here at Fred Haas Toyota Country, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.